In this video, I'm gonna show you a full step-by-step -step beginner walkthrough of Celeram and Keepa, which are the two product research tools that power my own seven-figure Amazon business. I'm on a mission to help as many of you guys as possible smash past your Q4 sales goals this year, so make sure to subscribe, be posting tons of videos and live streaming almost daily to help you smash your goals. Let's get right into it. All right guys, so we're here on my screen and let's break down how to use Celeramp and Keepa even as a complete beginner. So to start off, you can get a free trial of Celeramp at Celeramp.com and you can get a Keepa subscription at Keepa, K-E-E-P-A.com. You're gonna wanna do those through the Google Chrome store and get those downloaded on your Google Chrome browser, which is what you're gonna use for online arbitrage. That way you can nicely have Celeramp pop up like this. We can move it around, we can put it in the middle right here. I like having it over on the right. There's a big debate on Twitter one time about what side it belongs on. And then we have Keepa down here, which just is gonna show on a product page which breaks down what a product goes for over time, right? So let's break down the basics of Celeram. So to start off, I'm gonna refer to the buy box price from time to time throughout this video. This right here is the buy box. This is where you wanna be as a seller. Luckily, if you're priced competitively, you're gonna rotate in and out of the buy box throughout the day right here, and it's partially geographically based and such, right? So we can see right now this seller is in the buy box. This is actually an FBM seller, not an FBA seller, because we can see it doesn't ship from Amazon, it ships directly from the seller, right? So right here, basics of seller amp. Don't really worry about this stuff at the top um, on seller amp. However, right here, we can nicely see the dimensions of a product, which helps um, just estimating shipping costs and such. Um, we can see, you can click this, shows the description right here. If you wanna open up the product page, we already have that though. Right there, if you want to go and hunt for a product, you just click the G button right here on Google, which goes out and searches for it right there. And then you can also view all the data we're about to look at in Celeramp right here on the web app as well. Um, but we're gonna break this down. You're mainly gonna be using the Chrome extension for product research. Right here, okay, so we have the uh, eligibility, right? So this is uh, if you wanna check on gating. If you're interested in getting ungated, I have a full auto ungating tutorial. Everyone watching this can go get ungated in 200 plus brands today. Just check the link in the description for that. The alerts panel goes over certain things, whether like Amazon has the buy box, whether or not it's private, which would be a product you want to avoid. Um, IP complaint analysis, standard size, multiple variations, stuff like that, right? Not, not super important, but if you do see something red here, you typically want to avoid it, right? There, we can see we're nice and green, so um, don't have to worry about that. Okay, BSR, this is how quick a product sells. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be referencing BSR, aka sales rank, several times throughout this video. The lower the BSR, the better. It's a good rule of thumb, as a beginner, mostly stay below 100,000 sales rank for the standard 30% ROI minimum product, right? If something has 150,000 sales rank, but you're gonna make 70% on it, it probably is still a good product if you look at the Kiba chart and use the Kiba analysis I'm gonna show you in this video as well, right? Estimated sales, this is a rough estimate of monthly sales per month. The estimated cost, or the max cost right here, this is very helpful. So this is what you need. This is like your break even profitability essentially. So I have my minimum ROI at about 25%. Right here, so if we pay 1774 in the prop calculator, this is gonna put us right there. But say we pay like 15 bucks for this item, then we're gonna make seven dollars profit, right? And the seller and prop calculator takes into account sales tax, an estimated shipping to Amazon, everything like that, product costs, Amazon fees. So this is your exact net numbers based on that, right? And you're gonna to wanna to go to selleramp.com into your settings to add in your sales tax percent and a 40 cents per pound estimate to Amazon for shipping right there, which is done at sellerramp.com, right? We can see the offer summary right here, which shows the competitive sellers. It's not really super important how many sellers are on a product. It's much more about the trend of sellers. For example, if there were 15, 90 days ago, and now there's 45, probably an issue, and the price is probably headed down. However, if there were 16 or 13, 90 days ago, and there's 15 on it today, like there currently are, FBA, so this is people that have products at Amazon, FBM, this is pro, uh, people that are shipping directly to the customer, probably not gonna be too much of an issue. Right here, um, I don't super like looking at this data right here. Some people like leveraging this data. Um, you can see it's just kind of like a different um, representation of a lot of the stuff we already looked at. Right here, alert, same thing right here. You can see the keep a chart on Selleramp as well. This is really helpful when you're doing retail arbitrage and you're actually in like Marshalls or Nike or Adidas out and you're scanning products with the Selleramp mobile app. I mostly do online arbitrage, so that's what I focus on. However, um, you can see Keepa data right here, although you are gonna want a full Keepa subscription for reasons I'm about to mention. Right here, we can also go to the month long, see the year long and the all time, so we can see their performance of this product over time, the offer count, 
the competition, the price action as well. When you're a beginner, you're not buying big quantities of products. Like most stuff, you're only gonna be buying like three to five, maybe 10 units up, um, depending on the cost. So you don't really need to worry about like the year long data, mainly focus on the three month data right here. Okay, prop calculator. So we in C. If you wanted to calculate FBM shipping costs, you would toggle this over to FBM right here, right? And then you have to add in a uh, FBM shipping cost uh, based on the dimensions. Right there, a good rule of thumb, you actually definitely want to write this down if you're unfamiliar with FBM shipping costs. If it's between zero and three ounces, it's gonna be right around like three, four dollars. If it's between four and seven ounces, which you can see right up here on some, it's gonna be like 350, 450, maybe 475. Right there, if it's between eight and 11, it's gonna be in the $5 range. Between 12 and 15, it's gonna be in the five to six, 650, maybe 675 range if you're going across the country. If it's above one pound, it's almost always gonna go UPS ground. And if it's below one pound, it's typically gonna go USPS, but you're gonna buy shipping through Amazon, it's gonna tell you. That's a little bit more advanced. So, but write that down if you're unfamiliar with FBM shipping cost. Right here, okay, so we can see the exact number. Say this is, let's see, so this is, yeah, 0.3 ounces and ship for like, 350 probably right here. So we'd make about 25% ROI FBM. But if we paid 15 bucks, we'd make about 26% ROI FBA. Pretty similar cost because with FBA, we pay, we don't pay individual shipping. We ship our products bulk to Amazon. But with FBM, we do pay individual shipping, but we don't pay Amazon fees, right? Okay, this listing has no variations, no other colors or sizes. If you do run into like a sneaker listing, for example, each color and size is going to have its own keepit chart. So that's how you're going to measure velocity. Right here, Google Sheets, this is important. It's a little bit more advanced for organizing your leads. Uh, say this was like a lead that we purchased, right? All we need to do is one click export that out and it goes over to a Google Sheet, which we set up on sellerant.com. It's really important to have a Q4, one of these with Q4 fast approaching too, right there. We could also add a little note on this ASIN if we wanted to, like purchased 931 or <laughs> September 30th. Right there. Uh, I don't really use this discounts panel, but you could use that right here. Um, the offers tab, this is pretty important in terms of seeing uh, the other sellers, their pricing and your ROI at these given costs with the price inputted. Right there, we can see I've looked at this product a couple times right here. So those are the basics of SellerAmp, and then we're also gonna talk about how you can use SellerAmp for product research after we break down Keepa right here as well. So, okay. Starting off right here, this is Keepa. So when you're new and you just got a Keepa subscription, you're gonna have three charts right here. I would recommend clicking this sub ranks at the top right and taking out that middle one because the middle one's pretty much useless. Right here. This bottom chart is super simple, the new offer count. So this is the competition, right? So it really helps validate the velocity of a product when you can see that the competition's moving. So for example, right here, we can see on like September 5th, there were 28 sellers, and then a couple weeks later, there were only 11 sellers, right? So we can see this product clearly moves and you'll be able to see a natural ebb and flow in competition. We'd see back in January, this product had a ton of sellers. That was probably due to there being a huge Black Friday sale, right? As a beginner, you only wanna be looking at products that have three plus sellers for the most part, right? So for example, and that's by brands, like you'll see Glossier products that have probably one or two sellers, but it overall, seeing a listing like this, it validates this brand is good, right? Other brands that are good are like Nike, Adidas, Converse, Lego, you can open up the storefronts of any of these sellers, which we'll talk about in a sec how to do, and break those down, right? Okay, but bottom chart, you don't want to have that middle chart in Keepa, so you take out the sub ranks. The bottom chart is the competition, right? How much competition is too much competition? It's all about the trend, right? If the competition's recently shot up, there's a good chance the price can completely go now, right? So, okay, the top chart, this is the one that's hard to read right here. So, uh, you're gonna wanna copy what I have selected. So you wanna have sales rank selected so we can see the historical sales rank over time, which is that green line, right? We're also gonna wanna have the pink buy box line selected. So the pink buy box line is like I mentioned, it's this buy it now option, which is where you wanna be as a seller right up here, right? Um, so you wanna have that selected. The third party FBA, so that's the orange triangles. The orange triangles do not represent sales. However, the more orange triangles you see, the more a product is selling, right? It represents a change in third party selling, right? So I do like having that selected. I don't like having the blue FBM selected just because we're mainly gonna be FBA sellers, right? To build a sustainable business long term. So you don't really need that selected, right? And then the new price, right here, which is the blue line, we can't really see, that's the lowest new price. Um, that's automatically selected. You're gonna have to manually unselect it each time, so you might as well just leave it up there right here. But so for example, right, just to break this down, right? So we can see the sales rank over time, right? So how well a product sells. So say this was, for example, a hoodie, 
there's a good chance a hoodie's gonna go down in demand in the summer, so the sales rank's gonna go up, but in the winter, the sales rank's gonna go down, right? So the nice thing is you can see the historical sales rank and see that, for example, for, for the most part, like makeup products aren't super seasonal, so it makes sense that this rank was relatively consistent. However, if we select the buy box price, we can see the competition went way down here in April and May and the price went up. So that caused the demand to go down because uh, just simple supply and demand, if the price goes up, there's gonna be less demand for it, right? And then right there. So you mainly wanna be focusing on the buy box price because that's where you're gonna ultimately gonna be some. It's really important to when you're sending in products to Amazon that typically you price your products like one to $2 above the buy box just because naturally, your inventory might be shown before it's completely ready from a delivery date perspective at Amazon and you don't wanna be causing other people who don't know how to read Keepa charts, you don't know how to see the lowest price to cause that to go down, right? So the Keepa charts are the core part of Keepa you're gonna be looking at. However, you are also gonna be looking at the product details right here, which lets you see the, for the most part, mainly focus on this data over here on the right, which lets you see the sales rank averages over time, right? Like I said earlier, you want to stay under 100,000 sales rank and the buy box averages over time, right? That's the main data you want to be looking at here. Don't really worry about any of this stuff over here on the right, just focus on that buy box, uh, 90 day average, stuff like that. The more quantity you buy, the more you have to be worried about the averages and stuff. Right now, as a beginner, you're probably only buying like five to 10 of stuff, right? So you don't really need to worry about the year long data too much, right? Focus on mainly the last month, last 90 days right there and then each one to validate the demand's been good over time looking at the sales rank average right here uh the offers tab some people like looking at the offers tab to see the number of sold products right here from my own anecdotal experience this data is very inaccurate i do not recommend looking at the offers tab for anything except over here the first scene is pretty cool you can see when people are first seen on a listing and this validates that a product is good over time when you have people that have been on it for 28 months and nine months and five months and four months right here as we can see that helps validate that you know when a seller was first seen a listing that doesn't mean they've consistently been on it over time but it does mean that they you know were originally on it and then are still on it currently right there um the buy box statistics is a nice last part of uh keepa you want to be looking at predominantly you want to be focused on the charts but the buy box stats right here lets us see who's won the buy box how much they've won it when they've won it and at what average price they want it, right? So we can see exactly who's winning the buy box at what cost and everything we can nicely filter to see in like a 30 day period, 90 day period, 180 period, 365 day period, etc. right here, right? So we can see over the 365, we can see the most expensive sale was at 30 bucks or a person who's gotten the buy box for pretty much sales right here. And then the cheapest, it was all the way down here at 18, right? So you can see there can be a vastly different market on products throughout the years based or throughout the year, based on typically the ebb and flow of competition, right? So that's the basics of Keepa and SellerAmp right here as well. Uh, in terms of doing product research through SellerAmp, you can do what's called the storefront stalking method, which lets you, when you find or started a listing like this, for example, that we know is reseller friendly because there's other resellers on it or like a Nike or a Lego product, for example, really anything you see being sold by a bunch of other third party sellers, you can use what's called the storefront stocking method right here and we can use SellerAmp to look inside the storefronts of other sellers and we can see their review count to validate that they're making money, the ASIN count, right? And then all the brands and categories that they carry. So if this is your first Amazon video you're ever watching, you've seen the Glossier brand, you've heard me mention Nike and Adidas and Lego and stuff and now all these other brands we're seeing are also other ones you can go ahead and look for, right? And if you're worried about on gating, just check my on gating tutorial in the description. It's really easy to get done right here. But what SellerAmp lets you do is you can filter into specific brands, right? So we can see like all the Mac cosmetics items, right? Or all the toys and games items, for example, right? And you can see people sell all different types of products, right? As we scroll through these different storefronts right here. So this really nicely helps you validate demand and go out and find additional profitable products, right? Because we can look inside these storefronts and see what's selling quick, right? And then all we gotta do is look at the Keepa chart, make sure it looks good, and then one click Google it right here and see if we can track this thing down right here. So we can see, we can pay $16.15 right here. So let's open up this product and see if it's profitable right here. So we have $16.50, 15 cents, right? And then the lowest price is 26.71 right here. Right, so we pay 16, 15 right here. We'd see it's gonna make us about $2 profit. Um, right here, only about a 16% ROI, so I would pass on something like that. 
However, I would definitely look and see if there's any sort of coupon on the MAC Cosmetics website, right? Because if something pops up that gives us like, uh, you know, $10 off or 10% off, right? And then we get another 10% off here, which we can actually do math with and sell our and multiply that by 0.9. Now we will be able to make $4 profit on this, right? So that's not bad at all, right? And that's the game, guys. It's just hopping through these seller storefronts, finding quick selling products, and then going out and Googling these products and seeing if anywhere carries them at a profitable price based on the max cost that you see right here. Right, so for example, we can see 11. So if, they, if that's the right color, if they have the right color right there, that's gonna be nice and profitable on something like this, right? And we do the same thing on these other sellers with like Nike, so on and so forth basically, right? So that really is the game, ladies and gents, right? With selling up in Kiba, it's just nice. Oh, okay, yeah, here we go, right? Cause we can get $10 off 60 plus right there. So $10 off 60 plus, so that is right around 20% off, right? So 12 minus 20, so that puts our buy cost at like, right around 10, right there, and then you just nicely click into that to figure out what the coupon is, right there, so that puts us at like 10 cost, 23.5, $3 profit, um, right there, we check the keep us, see if we could price above that too. We can see the competition's trending down on something like this, and we can see historically the price is like 30 plus a good amount of the last year, so there's a decent chance if the competition keeps going down, the price is gonna keep going up, and say if you're watching this in a couple months, maybe the price back to 26, then this becomes a nice profitable product with a super high ROI, 50%, good volume, 77K rank. Not bad right there. So that's the basics of Seller and Keepa. If you guys got any questions, please let me know, but ultimately, you gotta get in the game, right? You gotta get, you know, we'd love to have you as a Seller Amp user at selleramp.com, get a Keepa subscription. I'm doing live streams, all of Key4 to help you guys get going, posting a ton of beginner guides, advanced guides, everything like that. So I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.